What's up guys, it's Rav. Welcome to the Pokemon Yellow Glitch Through. This series is all about playing through Pokemon Yellow and breaking the game as much as humanly possible, because boy are these first generation games broken. I may do more series like this for future Pokemon games, for now we're going to focus on Yellow version. Also, my voiceover in this video is a bit awkward, I'm still kind of getting used to the whole talking to a microphone thing again, so bear with me, it'll get better as the series progresses. Let's also just ignore the fact that I haven't uploaded in three years. I'll explain that in a future video. Either way, let's start a new game and sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head up to the forest. Now we're gonna proceed at first through this forest like normally, making sure not to battle this trainer specifically. Other than that, let's go through the forest and head up to Pewter City. Once we're at Pewter City, we're gonna buy a single escape rope and as many Pokeballs as we can afford. Let's head back to the forest, but before we get there, I'm going to catch a low-level Nidoran, as Pikachu can't do any damage to a Nidoking, so having a Pokemon that can actually deal damage would be nice. We'll go visit our little friend that we didn't battle, and go slightly off-screen and save the game. Now we'll go one step left, opening the menu at the same time as he becomes in sight, and we'll go ahead and use an escape rope. This is the long range trainer glitch and we're going to use it a lot through this series. But we're just going to beeline straight back into Viridian Forest and attempt to find either a level 4 Caterpie or a level 9 Pidgeotto. We're looking for a Pokemon with the special stat of 7 which sometimes occurs in these Pokemon, however the stats of wild Pokemon are variable. I'll go more in depth on how this works in a later video. But the reason why the special stat of 7 is important is because it's Nidoking's hex number in the game. Once we find one, in my case a level 4 Caterpie, we're going to growl at it 6 times, as this is lowering its attack stat. This is going to control the level of the Pokemon that we are trying to encounter. You'll see later, just trust me for right now. After we growl at it a bunch, we will run away, or in my case I killed it, and we'll dip out of the forest. Going back to Pewter, let's try to leave except Homie wants to take us to Brock because we haven't battled him yet. He will then somehow walk through walls and we'll join him next episode, but for now, let's just go once again back to the forest. Once we get back to the forest, God will ask us if we have a Pikachu, which of course we do not. Magically, after that, a wild level 1 Nidoking will appear. Now, if you have any sort of background in math, you may know that level 1 is not actually level 100. Don't worry, we're going to take care of that later. Even though he's level 1, Nidoking is still kind of a pain in the ass to catch, so we can't just start throwing balls at it immediately. I'm going to throw out my Nidoran that I caught earlier and weaken it a bit and then throw balls at it. Keep in mind, Nidoran is Nidoking's son, so I'm literally beating up my father. Also, I had to do this three times because Nidoran kept killing itself in confusion, so that's why we saved before we did the glitch. Once we finally end up catching it, let's go back to the Pokemon Center and heal and check out our newly caught Nidoking. You'll see that it has 777,000 experience points somehow and only needs 63 to level up to level 2. Now, if we get 63 or more experience points, it will level up to level 2. However, if we get under 63, it will level up to 100. This is called the XP Underflow glitch, and happens because level 1 Pokemon aren't supposed to be in the first generation games, and when we force them to be in the games, like in this scenario, they behave very erratically. Now that we have a level 100 Pokemon that will just blindly behave us even though we don't have a gym badge, let's go fucking destroy Brock and Mount Moon and, and head up to Cerulean City. Our Nido King is cool and all, but... I think a level 100 Mew would be much cooler, so let's go get a level 100 Mew. First thing we need to do once we get to Cerulean, after healing of course, is to go north to Nugget Bridge and battle our rival. Of course, we beat up all of his Pokemon and continue to Nugget Bridge where we beat up everybody else's. Once we get through Nugget Bridge, we're gonna make sure we don't battle the trainer off to the left and grab the Charmander while we're at it. Next, we're gonna go right to head to Bill's house making sure not to battle this trainer right here. Once we get to Bill's house, he's a Pokemon, and he needs us to turn him back into a human. 
Pikachu's a bit confused, but we're gonna follow Bill Limon's instructions to turn him back into a Bill. Once Bill is Bill again, he's gonna teach us how to shove a Pokemon into a computer and send it over the internet into the cloud. As violent as that may be, we're gonna end up using it later. Now we'll go back to Celadon, encounter the rocket, and then go directly south to try to catch an Abra. This took a while because Abra will try to use teleport as it's its only move. And if it uses teleport in a wild battle, it will flee the wild battle. So what I ended up doing, because I want to save my Pokeballs for the Mew battle, is I just saved and reset whenever I didn't catch him. After finally catching Abra, we'll head back up north and save. We're gonna go to the first trainer that we didn't battle, and this is gonna be our long range trainer for this scenario. Now we're gonna go right back up to the Nugget Bridge and battle the second trainer that we didn't battle earlier, who has a slow poke with a special stat of 21. We're gonna make sure we keep our distance from him as if we get too close, he likes to soft lock the game. So we're not gonna do that. It's like Nido King, we're gonna growl at this slow poke six times and beat it up. Now we're gonna head back towards Nugget Bridge, but our start menu magically opens by itself. After exiting out, we'll get a wild battle, not in the tall grass, and it will be against a level 1 Mew. Just like last time, we're gonna beat it up and catch it, however Mew is such a bitch to catch, even worse than Nidoking. So if you're on an emulator, you're gonna wanna save state when your start menu opens, and if you're on cartridge, you're just kinda shit out of luck and you're just gonna have to reset and do the whole glitch again. Once Mew is caught, we're gonna heal up and give it less than 63 experience points, so it goes to level 100. Now we have two level 100 Pokemon and one gym batch, so naturally we're gonna beat up Misty and beeline directly for Viridian City, making sure that when we're on routes, insert fucking route name here, that we don't battle these three trainers. Now let's go through the SSN and beat up Blue so bad that his Raticate dies. After that, we're gonna go up to the Captain's Den and give him a handjob. However, we're gonna decide it's actually not a good idea to be on a ship with a captain like this and hop off the ship right before it leaves. And we're gonna leave off this episode here. In the next episode, we are going to be absolutely destroying the map in three different ways. Stay tuned.